This is Dr. X.H. Balthazar. I am broadcasting once again to present my findings from the world of the uncanny. Today, I will play another of the investigations conducted in Charleston, South Carolina. In my last broadcast, I shared my interview with Violet Landry, who gave us an account of her experience with the Boo Hag, and perhaps more importantly, how Miss Landry's mother was able to keep the spirit at bay. If listeners recall, Violet provided me with a ledger of leads in the area. Today, we examine one of the more eye-catching entries, the Sabbatus Well. Upon further investigation of the word Sabbatus, I found that it was linked to a small township in southern Maine. I pondered how this town in Charleston may be linked. I continued to pour through city documents and town ledgers. Nothing. That is until I decided to search for Sabbatus in the phone book. Sure enough, it was there. I rang the number, but there was no answer. That is until I was awoken in the dead of night by a return call. The voice on the other end told me to meet him right away at a place called Drayton Hall. The following is my interview with the person I met there, who simply referred to themselves as Sabatus. This is Dr. Balthazar, May the 1st, 1956. I have arrived at Drayton Hall. The building is lost to time, a rotting relic of plantations past. It is currently 3.07 in the morning. It would be pitch black if not for the light of the moon. I fear that I may have been deceived. The property of Drayton Hall lies in near unlivable ruin and there is not a soul in sight. Being completely candid, I fear that the culmination of my efforts in Charleston may only be the nightmares of Violet Landry. Violet Landry speaks true. You, sir, you should be keen to follow what she says. Are you Sabatus, the man I spoke with on the phone? That's what they call me down here. I am Dr. X.H. Balthazar. It is a pleasure to meet you, sir. Would you be so kind as to step into the light? I can't quite see you fully. I can see you just fine for now. What do you know of Sabatus, doctor? Only that it is a town far north, and that Violet Landry wished for me to seek out the Sabatus well. <laughs> You are correct, sir. Sabatis, Maine. That is where I was born. What year? 1930. You are 26 years of age, then? I am. Tell me, doctor. Are you a man of weak wills? Should you see what is unthinkable, would you run in fear? I have seen all manner of things, Sabatis. A wise man fears the unknown, but never runs from it. Should your medical opinions fail you, will you still hear my tale? That is my purpose for being here. Now please, come into the light. Then look at me, doctor. Examine my corpse as you will. After my interview with the man calling himself Sabatus, I returned to my room. The first priority was dictating what I had seen of the man's body. My examination follows. Notes on the appearance and figure of the man known as Sabatus. Upon first viewing Sabatus, I noticed that despite claiming he was merely 26 years of age, the man appeared to be much, much older. A conservative estimation being about 80 to 95 years of age. His hair was completely white and thinning. Large patches of his scalp lay bare, 
exposing spotted and graying skin. I would guess the man weighed under 80 pounds. Despite his thin, almost skeletal appearance, his bone structure was quite staunch. Broad shoulders and ribs pressed against his decaying hide. Finally, and perhaps the most gruesome detail, small portions of his skin, particularly on his limbs, had begun to rot away, exposing muscle and in extreme segments, the bone itself. When I asked later on in the interview if I could return with a camera to record his appearance, Sabatis declined. Let's continue. <coughs> How long have you been unwell? Thirteen years ago is when it happened. Before that, I was a kid. Normal. Not like this. <coughs> 1943. The year this happened to you. You were 13 then. Correct. Feels like longer, but that would be the case. I have been everywhere trying to figure it out. I drove my mother mad when they had no answers. You've sought out medical help then? Countless times. For about a decade, I lived in hospitals, waiting around for them to tell me what I already know. Don't pity me, doctor. I didn't call you here to diagnose me. Of course. So what of your namesake? My name is Byron Moreau. At least it was before that day. I remember that. I grew up in Sabatis, a small place. I'm not much for big cities now or then. There's about 10 cemeteries in the area. Unusual for a town that size. People say that's where they buried all the unclaimed. That's not true. Not the unclaimed, but the unclaimable. People like me, they pitched them up there because they didn't know what to do with them. Horrifying. How do you know that? Being kids in a place like this, we would play around in the graveyards. Nothing else to do in a place that's all dead. Everyone was afraid of this one. It was attached to an old house, and in the back was a well. People didn't go there, seeing as all the graves were unmarked. Nothing but blank wooden crucifixes. I regret ever going there every single day. Do you have any idea what this place may have been called? Or could you mark it on a map? No. Why did you go there to begin with? I was a stupid kid. I guess I just wanted people to think I was brave and whatnot. I would go around saying I wasn't afraid, trying to talk all big. Even when the other kids called me on it, I marched right up to that place and danced around. Why was the well significant? That's where they threw the bodies that they didn't feel deserved to cross. At least that's what the ghost story said. It's easy to be brave when you're young, doctor. You weren't raised in a God-fearing household then? No, sir. I was unaffected by the stories, the warnings, the claims of devils or the dancing dead. Nothing deterred me. When I got up to the well, I dared them all to lower me down thought I would be regarded as some sort of hero or badass. Hmm. I see. I rode down with a rope strung around my chest, used a book of matches to see where I was. At first, everything was dry cobblestone. Nothing of interest. I scoffed at the rumors. There was nothing there. Before long, the wall started giving way to damp muck and grime. Still, I was undeterred. I thought maybe there'd be treasure near the bottom. Money. Something. I'd be rich. Did you reach the bottom of the well? I did. When I got a footing, I shouted up to the others. Calling them chicken shit and spineless, I struck a match and found that the well was empty, just as I thought. Just a cool blue puddle under my feet. 
I started calling out to the others ready to exit. No response. Minutes pass, nothing. After about half an hour, I start to panic. I started screaming, yanking on the rope, begging them to pull me up. At this point, I was running out of matches. I struck near my last match. I saw him. Who? The man in the well never told me his name. Can you describe him? No, not really. Just heard him talking. What did he sound like? Did he have a specific dialect? He had a deep voice. Deep, much deeper than yours or mine. He seemed lonely. We talked for a long time. What did he say to you? He kept telling me that everyone left already, and that someone came and took everyone away. Said he wasn't allowed to follow. Didn't mean much to me at the time. Still, to this day, I feel I spend more time in that well than up here. I remember that he asked me what year it was. I told him it was 1943, and he didn't say much for a while. Then he asked me if I was going to be leaving soon. Do you know how long you were down there? I do not, but it felt like a long time, a very long time. It was black as night, so I don't know for sure, but... <coughs> then the rope started tugging me. I felt myself lifting up. And I told the man I was leaving. He didn't respond, but I felt him grab my hand for a moment. Was it trying to pull you down? No, he wasn't. Just felt like he was shaking my hand goodbye. Curious. What happened when you exited the well? When they pulled me out, I looked like this. Maybe a little better. But they all looked the same. As if not five minutes had passed. <sighs> Some of the kids didn't recognize me when I came up. They all screamed and ran away. I walked back to my mother's house before I even realized what had really happened to me. From there, well, I told you what happened from there. How did you end up in Charleston? I felt I had to. After all the doctors had poked and prodded me, I was a grown man. Can't hold down a job looking like me. So I came here to this place knowing it was all but forgotten. That's how I met Violet Landry. She's a kind woman. Brings me food and supplies once a week on the dot. Indeed. I should like to conduct an additional interview after I've had time to gather some research and develop more questions for you. Doctor, if you could, now that you have heard my tale, diagnose me once more. Given the extremity of your case, Mr. Turow, I think you encountered something indeed. Beyond the control of a child, much less anyone else. What that phenomenon may be requires further research on my end. Rest assured, the next time we meet, I hope to shed some light. Thank you, Doctor. By the way, the man in the well. I think I did see him for a moment. I remember that he wore a black suit lined with blue fabric. I thought it was strange he was all dressed up if he was just sitting in a well all day. Suppose if the stories were true, he didn't die like the rest. Thank you for ascertaining that detail for me, Mr. Turow. That inspires much study. I will return soon. For now, good night. The case of Sabatis, or Byron Turow, is puzzling. There is no disease that initiates rapid aging on the body, no medical precedence for what happened at all. Further study has been made difficult, as days later I read in the local obituaries that an old man had been found dead within Drayton Hall, an apparent suicide. The only course of action seems to be traveling to Sabatis and searching the many graveyards in the town. Until then, dear listeners, I will uncover what I can. We must press on. For now, goodbye.
and good night. <laughs>